Identity is about discovering who you are. Does this help me? Hell yeah. It's about are you creative, talented, kind, generous, helping others. That's spirituality. I think it's so important to our patients, and particularly in, the, in a value-based healthcare context, that we do measure that. So that's why it's, to my mind, one of the most important outcome um, projects. We know that a sense of belonging or spirituality is really important for our patients. It's been demonstrated in the, in, in the, in the focus groups. This is what they are telling us. We decided that we wanted to inquire of patients what they saw to be the benefits of their faith and spirituality. So we interviewed in all about 80, 80 patients, simply asking them, what are the benefits for you? What are the results for you? And they weren't all religious patients, but it was on the basis that everybody has something deep within them, call it spirituality. So taking the uh, vast range of responses, we did a, a, an analysis of them and found that they fall, fell into a number of, of categories or groups. The first one being uh, the sense of being connected to other people, we call that belonging. The second related to the patient's own identity, their worth, their sense of value, and we call that becoming. And then thirdly, the deepening of their spirituality or faith as an end in itself, which we call belief. And then fourthly, the sort of resilience and being able to cope with the hiccups of life, and we call that behaving as a behavioural response to events. And finally, patients were saying this just contributes to my overall sense of, of progress. So we call that blossoming. I think these uh, outcomes go to the substance of who we are as, as human beings. We're all human and we all have these needs. And having ascertained what patients were telling us were the important outcomes of their faith and spirituality and their spiritual care they received, we wanted to be able to demonstrate and to measure the change over time of the impact of those inputs because in order to demonstrate value you need to demonstrate positive change. We devised a measurement scale, a very very simple 10-step scale for each of the important outcomes. Patients were saying a whole range of things to us but very movingly from where that outcome was missing from their life through to a place where perhaps in terms of maturity they felt that family and friends were really, really important to them. Pets as well featured quite significantly, but a sign of wanting to connect outside of themselves. And we started off with about six patients uh, and slightly nervously wondering how they'd respond. Initially we used a pentagon shape, so five arms for the five outcomes with ten points on the scale. One of the first patients that we tested this with clearly identified where he was. Belonging was really important to him. He was someone who'd gone through quite a, a deep experience of discovering forgiveness and freedom from guilt. And when we interviewed him, it was actually 36 weeks later, there was a significant progress in each of his five outcomes. And he could see that and attribute it to the leaps of faith and personal discovery that he'd made, so that was really encouraging. He was interviewed by the BMJ and said, a lot of friends and family have died. I needed to get things off my chest. I just wanted to belong somewhere in life, in the church, and I got baptised. I felt I was nothing, but being around nice people helped me to feel like a nice person. We recruited in all 24 patients and worked with them, charting their assessments initially and then six months or so later, and for a number of patients, a third assessment was possible. Further outcomes sort of emerged as identified by patients as being important. One of those was a, a reduction in anxiety and feeling calmer, a reduction in anger, a reduction in feelings of inappropriate guilt and shame, an ability to care for others and show greater compassion, and finally, which is really interesting, an ability to be more creative. Our initial simple Pentagon style of presentation was becoming too cluttered and, and unwieldy, so we changed the style of presentation to effectively a, a bar chart showing the 10-point scale, so we ended up with 24 sets of data. 
it demonstrates that the outcomes of spirituality and faith in tangible terms, in substantive terms, are significant and indeed measurable. And I think one of the really positive examples, probably my favourite, is a man who was really limited by his anxiety. When he first assessed himself, he was scoring fairly low in some key areas, not least belonging, but through the chaplaincy working with him and also his psychologist working with him, he was at a place where he felt that he'd reached a point of, of maturity in all of these key areas that he moved uh, over this period from being on a, a medium secure ward to being at a point where he was really able to be discharged to a community placement. It was a remarkable journey. From the work that we did, I think patients were demonstrating to us that the outcomes of their spirituality uh, and their faith could be articulated and very importantly over time they could be measured and the measurement showed positive change in their mental health and well-being as a direct result of their spirituality and faith. Spirituality is for everybody, not necessarily expressed in terms of faith or religion but it expresses something about being human, what's at the heart of each person. Chaplains are, are part uh, of the team and I think the really helpful emphasis on uh, outcomes shows that it's, it's not so much what uh, uh, input, what profession uh, uh, matters for the patient, but it's the patient, it's the patient outcome. So Dr. Paul Wallang at St Andrews has helped the whole charity understand more about value-based healthcare and the importance of outcomes. But I think what, what caught my attention was, was your emphasis on, on outcomes. And, and you're saying that chaplaincy really got this because we understand what holistic care is about. We have a common goal of wanting to do the very best for the patients in our care, irrespective of what discipline we come from. You know, you almost couldn't get more different, really, between what, what, what we do. But our, our clear focus on the patient is, 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 is the thing that guides us. That's the light, the kind of torch. Coming at issues to the same issue, but from different perspectives, yeah. Yeah. really enriches yeah. uh, the, the, the wisdom. And it's about my respecting what you do and you respecting what I do and really understanding that as well. I think without this additional focus or const construction of this tool, we would not have had a completely holistic picture of the patient, having heard what the patients have, have told us. Without being able to measure that, I, I could not be sure that we were completely addressing the, the, the um, needs of the patients. We developed our, our own work based on what our own patients were telling us. So that's yes. that's that's a golden way of developing something which really which really works in, in our setting. I think the one take-home message I would probably say it was that a sense of belonging or spirituality can and should be measured. It often uh, feels quite uncomfortable to measure spirituality, but I think we've demonstrated through our pilot that. It can be done um, and we can improve quality as a consequence of that. I think the key thing uh, for me to take away is the fact that faith and spirituality uh, has an impact uh, and that impact is, is measurable and therefore um, that faith and spirituality need uh, in, a, in a significant way to be included uh, in the provision of care that we give to patients because it makes a difference to them.